Thank you. Thank you. For me, what? What? Uh, I shall. I shall Are you serious? Oh, what? So, oh, yeah. You know, what I'm trying to do? Yeah, I'm trying to do it. It's like. Uh,
image okay. a positive image Probably not going to make a ton of sense up front, but we'll get to it. How is there a back of a lens for lens just symmetrical? Oh, yeah, but like. I said I'm back in a way, Jerome, not experienced in this. Yeah, but like, let's talk about evolution for like 20 minutes. So, is that something? Let's talk about. All right, all right. Well, your guys' sarcasm about pre calc is affecting my ability to teach in this class. So, quiet. It's wasting time. All right. Um, so when I say opposite side of the object, we're the same side of the object, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so now, remember, I can put an a, a object here or an object here. It doesn't matter. So let's say I put my object over here. Okay, if I put my object over there, and I get an image that is positive, what is that, where does that tell you the image is going to be located? Opposite side. Opposite side. Over here. Always. Yep. But if I have the object here and it's positive, the image is over here. Yeah. Does that make sense? Opposite. Okay. If I have an object that, again, is in the same location on the right side here, and I have a negative image distance, where is that image? Same, same, side. same side. So it will be here, or if I have the object here with a negative, it will be here. Negative, not object, negative image distance. Like what we get from the equation? Yes. So object is always positive. That's what I have over here. Okay? If I do the math and I get a negative image distance, what that means is the image is on the same side as the object. But I'm saying the object could also be over here. If that makes sense. If the object's always positive, why is there a real object being back of lens? Negative. So what, they, what they're saying is real object and back of lens are saying opposite side. Like the back side. Yeah. So I like to use opposites and same side because I don't think there's a back side of a lens. That's why I'm making kind of my own little sign convention. This is not wrong, but it's a different way of looking at it. Um, what else do I need? How is the object? Remember, there are two focal points, right? Yeah. Every, there, every. Well, you only have one focal point in the problem, but if I have an object here versus here, I, I'm gonna have my focal points on either side. Yes. Is it just there is the no, object is? Yeah. So if the object is here, this That's why I don't like to say front or back, I like to say same side or opposite. Okay. Wait, so the focal point. It should be focal point. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, you might want to write if you don't do you have this chart in your notes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You might want to make a note that yeah, this is all this is right. I'm just giving you another way to look at this chart if this can be. Okay. Um, so if you've got your converging lens, it's always going to be a positive focal point. If you have a diverging lens, your focal point will always be negative. Right? I think that book covers all the sign conventions. It's actually less, I think, that you have to know, but it is a little different. I don't think I have. Why, why is this lens different than the one we learned today? I know it's not. So why is there a different chart? I 
didn't give you a chart for the other one. Then what'd you say this one has less than one? No, but like, you said, I'm saying last chapter. Oh, oh, many years. Vector, Because you we got three yeah. different kinds of mirrors. <laughs> no, it wasn't All right. Like, so hot. Let's do some problems here. <laughs> oh, oh. We speak. That's right, Cole. Did you make the vector? No, it's Okay, Emma, give me a variable up here. Okay. Uh, the focal length is 10 centimeters. Oh, you chose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both lengths have a focal length. The easy <laughs> one. Okay, but they're not both 10. But lies. The focal point for a converging lens is 10. And then the negative for Focal point for a diverging lens. But the length is 10. Oh, yeah. Focal length is 10. Yeah, why do you have to know both? Because we're going to put both lenses. Yeah, so it wants you to find both of us. Okay? Autumn, could you give me another variable or a different variable? Object distance is 30 centimeters. Okay, for okay, yeah. So that would be P or Q. And since we said the object's always positive, we don't have to worry about sign. Wait. So why is there a chart today for when P is negative? That was my question as well. Why is there like on, even in our notes it says there's a negative object? It's been, been diverging. It says P can be negative sometimes. That's what I've asked. Oh, good question. P can be negative if you have multiple lenses, which basically what you have is you you have. <laughs> you're not shut up. I didn't even say it. What is it? Uh, well, it's a great question. Um, so when you use uh, microscopes, they use two lenses. And so what you do is you have a the first lens creates a real image. And that image becomes the object of the second lens. And so that's where you would have. We're not going to do any of that stuff, so cool. but I'm just saying. That exists. We're not going to do any math about that. But yeah, we will talk about microscopes. Yeah, but no. Or, did I say microscope? I meant telescope. You said microscope. 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 Why is it I don't know how Microsoft is going to work. That's probably why. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, my hand, like, Microsoft is really small. No. They don't. No. They see small. They see small. Okay. Any other information up here that's pertinent? Gravity is not like a second. I need to get my keys better. They look like C is 3.00 times the VAP. Uh, P is 12. The H is unknown. Wait, isn't PV 12.5, not 30? PD. PD. I'm trying to think about, wait, do you remember from chemistry? No, P is. Point oh, two eight five. Wait, what? What did you see? Oh, yeah. Sorry. And what was the unit that was like point two eight five? Oh, so it's not okay. I was assuming we were just. I just assumed that they were. We were just taking an image or a, a, a lens and switching the lenses out. All right. Yes. Oh. Uh, so. Let's just start with one set. Let's just start with the converging stuff. Let's start finding our Q. Okay. Right, you want me to actually like show all the work? We don't have a place. Why aren't you guys solve? That's what I want you to do. I want you to find both, both of the image distances and the magnifications of both. Now you should know what the magnification oh, is uh, of one lens always. Nine. Less than one. Where's your Nine. note packet? Oh, me. I looked at my locker. Gross. Pull out a blank sheet of paper and solve this question. 
Oh, the last thing that all the magnification had the last thing that was up he did for PD. There is an object distance in front of the version that's in our bottom. The last thing that's all I know is how much I dislike the soul. Could you tell me real, virtual, upright? Well, you know what one of them is always, right? It's always what? And then you can determine whether the converging lens is virtual or real based on its location, based on its location from the forward. <coughs> Inside the focal point, you will create a virtual, virtual oh, image, virtual. and if you're outside the focal point, you will create a real image. Yeah. And you should know that real is always inverted and virtual is always up. Yeah, and if the object were placed less than 10, it would be a virtual image. In this case. Yeah. That's so dumb. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Here's the answer. So you guys uh, can check to make sure you get it right. Your um, your Q for your converging lens is 15 centimeters. Your magnification of your converging lens is negative 0.5. Oh, I didn't do Why did you say magnification? Hey, cool. Guess who? Guess who? Find the image distance and the magnification. So you should have four answers. Oh. And then your diverging image will be negative 5.56 centimeters away. And your magnification for your diverging lens will be 0.445. Oh, I see that. For which one? For both or for one? For the last one. For the last one, the one that was 0.445? Okay. Well, it's negative, what is it, negative Q over B? Yeah. And your Q is negative, so those negatives will cancel out. Does that make sense? <laughs> and then, what is on the then you're dividing by your your uh, image distance, which is 12.5. So What's on top? Uh, for oh, fine magnification. What's the Q of the second? Negative 5.56. Negative 5.56. So negative 5.6. 
over 12.5. Yeah, but you need the two negatives to cancel out there. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's basically 5.56 divided by 12.5. And you said the first M was negative 0.5? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much time we got? Uh, okay, this is kind of the same stuff. I feel like you guys are getting, so I do want to get to uh, talking about it. Uh, 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 okay. I, it always drives me nuts because I always, when I get to this, I'm like, okay, nearsighted. Nearsighted. That means that you can see close and not far away. No, I think it's opposite. No, it's not. Nearsighted means no, I see what you're saying because like if it's near, near like you're nearest. I just looked it up yesterday. Now I can't remember. You guys are nearsighted. I'm nearsighted. I'm nearsighted. Yeah, I think if you're nearsighted, you can see better far away. Someone look it up. That's not right at all. Okay, look it up. We'll figure out who's right. What is nearsighted? Uh, <laughs> we can argue. Let's just look it up. I'm able to see things clearly unless they are relatively close to the eyes. So you only see things close. Ah. I, I stand first. I have no problem giving that up. It's not going to make any sense on you. That's part. Oh, being able to see. Listen, your sight means you can see things only if it's close. Far sight it means you can only you see things better if they're far away. Okay. Now, here's what happens. In your eye, you have a transparent front of your eye which has a lens and acts like a lens. It's cornucopia. Okay? Cornucopia. It's cornea because you live in Iowa. So, uh, um, the eye also contains a crystal, crystalline lens that is, that is further back in your eye and reflect, refracts the light even more so that it hopefully lands on your retina in the back of your eye. It just missed. So I, ideally, first of all, the outside of your eye is shaped like a lens or has the, has the shape of a convex lens. And then there's an actual lens in your eye that further refracts it so that the light that comes into your eye converges on the back of your eye or your retina. Whoa. Okay? So if you have good vision, the light that comes into your eye will perfectly converge on the back of your eye, your retina. If you have bad vision and need corrective lenses, it's because your lens in your eye either has changed or morphed over the t over years, and so light will come in and it will either converge before it hits your retina, or it would converge behind your retina. Okay, and that's where nearsightedness and farsightedness comes into play. And so that's why you need corrective lenses. What the corrective lenses will do is they'll bend the light so that it works with your current lenses in your eye, so that it will actually hit your retina where it's supposed to. Right? I think there's a here. It's blurry because it's blurry because so yeah this is a, this is pretty much what happens, right? Here you got light hits your lens and because your lens is not doing what it should do, it converges at a point that would be actually behind your retina and so it looks blurry. That's how it looks right? So then you put a corrective lens here, which bends it before it gets to your eye a little bit, and then it further bends it when it gets in your eye, and it perfectly hits the back of your retina, and that's why when you wear corrective lenses, you can actually see, because it helps convert the light where it needs to be converged to. Okay? That's not my own. So this is why you typically have uh, a, so listen, you need a converging lens for this because without it, it didn't converge quick enough. Do you see that? It yeah. didn't converge quick enough, so you needed a lens that converged it more. In this situation, you've got it where it's coming and, and converging too quick. Yeah, your lens in your eye and your cornea is not I don't, I don't know what the actual technical term is, if it actually like morphs or changes its shape, I don't know. Oh, so myopia is a Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. 
So when light comes in here, because of the shape of your eye, your lens, it converges too soon, and so you need a lens that diverges it a little bit so that when it does converge it, it converges it further back in your eye, hitting your retina and allowing you to see the light not blurred. You couldn't figure out which one of those fish one has an air level yeah. It's like a fish. The inside of it has a fish. Yeah, yeah. It's a fat fish. Sure. A fat fish. fish. And then, uh... Do uh, so, these look the same? No, it's because this is a little thinner there, and that's thicker there. I mean, they just both have the same curve, so it's... No. No. What I, I'm not going to worry about what that curve. visual curve looks okay. like. Yeah. All right. Um, so com you can actually combine lenses, and we were kind of getting into that when we were talking about um, microscopes. And I'm assuming that's how. Uh, did I say microscopes again first? Yeah. Telescopes, and I'm pretty sure that's how microscopes work too. Did you say microscope? Yeah. But like I'm just saying, I don't know the inner workings of that. Can you hold the telescope to like a wall and see the cells? Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, cells? No, the wall cells. <laughs> the wall cells. Um, wait, can you, can you okay, so here's what happens. Okay? What will happen is the first lens of what, your microscope or your telescope will form a real image that is the object of your second lens. So you get a magnification because of that. So compound microscopes use two converging lenses. Greater magnification can be achieved by combining even more lenses. Okay? And refracting telescopes use two converging lenses as well. I think your book has a visual. I don't. I'm not sure how to be. What if you had a what if you have binoculars to a telescope? Oh. Could you see planets? What if you turn oh, What if you wanted to get your friends here faster? So you turn the, the binoculars around and then you saw them they were really big and you pull them down like the you just throw your eye. Okay. Um this is gonna take too long. What I would do is I think there's a little short blurb in your in your book. Short. That's a that's a good use of the words. Say word and blurb. Yeah, that's obviously what I think of. Lauren. 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 Lauren.